All right, brothers and sisters, friends, go ahead and grab a seat. We are going to start up. We're going to start up. If you guys would have a, have a seat here. We're going to jump into our uh, congregational meeting. Thanks for sticking around. Um, we're so glad you guys stayed in. Hey, uh, this spring and summer, we recognize we need to have more kind of routine and rhythm checkpoints as a church, a congregation with our members especially, just to be more updated on what's going on in the life of our church, more intimately with, yeah, some of the, some of the business of our church, but also just relationally with our church so that we can be more connected to one another. And we're in this interim season right, in the life of our church. Our church is 12 years old, but we're in this interim season that's really uncharted territory for us. There's a lot of unknown. As we're searching for a new senior pastor, there's a lot of unknown with our finances. There's a lot of unknown with how sustainable things are for us moving forward. There's a lot of unknown. And as we shared during the announcement time, there's a lot to be excited about and to celebrate in the life of our church right now, and we don't want to overlook that, that we do have a lot going on. There's a lot of opportunities to connect and engage. And that's paired with questioning how sustainable is the trajectory we're on as a church right now. And so we want to continue to seek the Lord and, and be transparent together about the realities of where we are. And so uh, just a, a little overview of where we're headed. We're going to give some updates during this time on where we are with our finances as a church. Peter Armstrong is going to come up here shortly and share on where we are financially. We're also going to get to hear an update on where we are in the search for a new senior pastor um, from, from the chair, uh, co-chairs of our hiring committee. Greg Wickersham and, and Michelle Napton are going to come up and share about the progress on what the hiring committee has been doing for five months. A lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of energy they've been putting in courageously to that. We're going to get to hear a little bit more of the vision and the outlook for where we're heading this fall. And David Stansel, Pastor David's going to come up and share about where we're headed this fall that we can see. And in the midst of it, we want to be uh, clear on kind of the state of where we are, some of our current realities as a church. And we're, we're really trying to seek the Lord and say, Lord, how can we move forward in a sustainable way? How can we move forward in a life-giving way? How can we move forward, as, from what David preached on, how can we move forward in a way that brings joy and health to us individually, but collectively as a church? You know, in, in John 16, this is a verse that's been on my heart for our church. Uh, John 16, was is right in the middle of Jesus last night with his disciples before he's arrested. And he has just been, they had the Last Supper, he's washed their feet, a lot has happened, and things are starting to click for the disciples. And they're starting to see, wow, Jesus, we actually starting to believe you are who you've been saying you are for the last two and a half to three years. Like, it's starting to really click. And they're starting to really engage with Jesus in the mission and the ministry work that he has for them. They're starting to grab a hold of it and take responsibility for themselves, and in this night, this intimate night, Jesus is, he drops kind of this bomb on them. And he says, listen, things are not going to be all great <laughs> for you. In fact, there's going to be a lot more trouble. And let me read this in John 16, verse 33. Jesus says, in me, you may have peace, but in the world, you will have tribulation. Take heart. I have overcome the world. And as they're starting to um, embrace and understand, okay, Jesus, we believe you're the Messiah, the Savior. We're, we're, we're with you more and more. Jesus throws a curveball and he says, I'm about to leave. <laughs> I'm about to head out. And you are going to be responsible for a lot that's coming. Everything's about to change. He actually says right beforehand, you're going to scatter. You're going to fall into confusion and chaos. You're going to flee. You're going to scatter. And everything we've been working toward is going to seem like it's going to completely flip upside down and fall apart. And so he gives them these words of encouragement. He says, and he reminds them, and he reinforces to them, and, and in that to us, to us as followers of his, that there is hope to be found, not in anything that the world brings, in fact, what the world brings will be tribulation and trouble. 
But he says, in me, you may have peace. And I love that David really brought a lot of this out in his sermon today about joy, finding joy in the midst of sorrow. Jesus says, in me, you may have peace, not chaos. In the world, you will have tribulation and trouble, but not peace. And so he says, take heart. Be encouraged. I'm with you. And I have overcome. I have overcome. And so we hold on to that because we believe Jesus is more concerned for the future and well-being of his church, the big church, the body of Christ, than we could ever be. He is more concerned with the well-being of our souls and our being and our relationship with him. He's more concerned with that than we ever will be. He says, I've overcome. And so I share this because we're going to hear some things in the life of our church that might bring some concern and some confusion. And we might think, okay, Lord, what are you doing? right now. But may we collectively be a people who faithfully seek Jesus to find our hope and peace in him, to expect that we will have to endure hardship, and in that all that we would take heart because we know Jesus is with us and that he's already overcome. And as David said, we can find our joy in him in the midst of this. So we're going to share a a, a few updates, but I want to pray before we do, and then I'm going to invite Peter Armstrong to come up. So would you just pray with me for a moment? So Father, this is your church, and we are your people, and we are so thankful, Lord. Thank you, God, that you have called us together, that we are all here together in this room, and there are other members of this church who are out and scattered in different places, but you are the reason we are here, and so Lord, we seek you. We trust you. We look to you, we lean into you, and pray, God, that you would lead us, Village Church of East Atlanta, to a more joyful future. God, would you lead us to a more fruitful future? Would you lead us to a future that is strengthened in hope, united in love? Father, that together we would really reflect your body more and more here, but but outward among this community. And so, Jesus, we pray that now in this time, in this meeting, God, would you bring to light what's going on in our church's life? And God, may you encourage us in the midst of that to seek you and to put our hope in you. And so I pray this in Jesus' name. Now, our vision is that we would be, Village Church of East Atlanta, a people compelled by the love of Christ to live out God's mission of renewal and restoration in our East Atlanta community and beyond. That is the vision we believe God has given us for this church, that we would be a people who contribute together to the renewal and restoration with Jesus of this community and the surrounding communities. And so together, let's seek him for that. So Peter, would you come on up? And share with us just an update on where our church is financially. Do you want to hold this? Thanks, Clint. As Clint uh, indicated, uh, my name is Peter Armstrong. I'm the finance deacon uh, for the church. And we wanted to bring you up to date. Uh, We had a meeting, I think it was, in May. And we updated you on the first quarter of the year. We wanted to update you on the second quarter of the year. We're a calendar year. Uh, organization so we go January through December so this is taking us through the month of June so Wes is uh, operating the slides for us and this uh, first slide slide number one shows us what happened in uh, quarter two so April May and June Uh, our actual income was 109,000 compared to budget of 78,000 uh, significant variance of 31,000. The primary uh, reason for that is that we had a one-time contribution of $25,000 in the month of June. Fabulous, fabulous. So that's, that's always good news. Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, the uh, expenses, uh, we had a positive variance uh, for the quarter of just about $10,000. So the combined uh, variance, positive variance from a revenue standpoint and the positive variance from an expense standpoint 
uh, gave us a um, positive result for the quarter of 40, almost $41,000. So that's, that's excellent. So, but uh, we just have to keep in mind that that was a one-time donation. So we can't count on that at all times. So Wes, we move to slide number two. Uh, this looks at giving on a quarterly basis uh, for quarter two, and we compare 2019, 2020, 21, and 22. So in 2019, we had uh, quarter, uh, quarterly giving of almost 51,000. That increased to 98,000 in 2020. It dropped to 21, excuse me, uh, 81,000 in 2021. And then for 2022, that was 109,000. So uh, that's good news, but keep in mind that we had the, had the one-time contribution. So if we can go to slide number three. Uh, this shows us the um, balance sheet. And if you look on the left-hand side, uh, the bank accounts, that's cash that we have in the bank at the end of June. OK, sorry. Uh, that's cash that we have in the bank at the end of June. Uh, the other significant uh, asset are fixed assets. And then equity is 173000 at the end of June. So let's look at slide number four. This shows budget versus actual for January through June for the two quarters. And you can see that revenue uh, exceeded budget by 28,000. You can see that total shortfall was 19,000 compared to a budget of 62,000. So a positive variance of 42,000. Good news. The last, the last slide, slide number five, we wanted to look at what was our original budget for 2022 compared to what our modified budget is or our for current forecast is. From a revenue standpoint, we believe that revenue will be about 313,000 for the year. Uh, budgeted expenses, we've been able to look at that very closely and we, we have reduced what we think our expenses will be by 65,000. That will result in a reduced shortfall of 65,000. So our projected shortfall, modified shortfall, is 47,000. Still a shortfall, but not as significant as it had been uh, budgeted initially. Are there any questions? OK, if no questions, we'll pass it back to Clint. Thank you, Peter. So Peter has uh, been graciously and wonderfully serving as uh, one of our deacons who's overseeing our finances now. And he works very closely with Helen Kynes, who's our executive director. Um, so Peter, thank you for the work. You're, vo you're volunteering a lot of time to helping us. Thank you for the work you're volunteering to help with that. Yeah. So part of that picture is to see that there's a lot God is doing, uh, but we're still, we have a huge need, $47,000 shortfall in this year so far, and, and it's pointing us toward uh, even more by the end of the year. And so we're just trusting God that he would continue to provide and meet the needs of our church. We want to ask you to trust with us and pray with us that God would continue to do that. So thank you, Peter. Let me invite Greg Wickersham and, and Michelle Napton to come up. Uh, Michelle and Greg uh, also are volunteering a ton of time uh, in a lot of ways as well. They have been chairing, co-chairing uh, our pastoral search and hiring committee with four others. So would you guys give us an update on where you are? Oh, yes. I wanted to wear this up front. <laughs> Make sure. <laughs> the, uh, can we hear here? Okay. Okay. Um, and first, I first I'll want to acknowledge, in case any of you have forgotten and everything, let's acknowledge the other members of the committee. So we've got Rob Fortson and Andrew Levine. Where's Andrew? Oh, out of town. They're out of town. And Amy Mossgrove and Paula Jessup. So, so as we continue to be hard at work and. Um, I wanted to give you, we wanted to give you an update on where we are right now. 
the, so to give a little past, like we went through first level interview, first interviews with about eight, nine candidates, I think. And um, so we're currently, we've now completed a second round of interviews. There's a total of five candidates that have had second interviews. Um, one of those has already dropped out of the process and took another call at another church. But, so we're still uh, working with the four candidates. Um, and the, some of the things, so what we're doing now with those four candidates, we're meeting or we're, we're calling their references. Um, we have some of you in the congregation as volunteers to listen to sermons, and you've been giving us some sermon review and feedback, and we appreciate all of those. And passing off. I'm going to stand a little closer over here. Um, and we also, in addition to doing a second interview with the candidates, we have met with three of their, three of the candidates' wives just to check in with them, hear from them, answer any of their questions. Um, that was like a shorter interview, but they're, in, they're going to be involved in this process. So we wanted to talk to them. Um, and let's see, what else are we doing? Tomorrow, our committee is meeting to discuss all the interviews we just have completed in the last month. Um, now that summer is over, we are able to meet hopefully a little more regularly. Um, and then we'll move forward. The hope is that one of these four candidates we will feel led to keep pursuing and we will, the next step would be, we'll do background checks and some, some other further things. And then um, we will invite the candidate we felt led to um, to come and candidate at our church. So they would preach on a Sunday morning, they would meet with the leaders of our church, they would meet with um, some other members as well. Um, the timing of that depends on a lot of factors. We're looking at maybe late fall, early spring, but there's a lot of factors to consider. So we, we keep moving forward with urgency, but also um, listening to the Lord and making sure we're, we're being led to the right person. Um, let's see. We continue to seek your prayers. We would love for you to keep praying. Um, again, um, I gave this invite last time. Uh, we have a, a calendar reminder in my phone at noon on Fridays to pray specifically for this. So if you would like to join me at that time, that's great wherever you are. Um, or just pray. There, we can never pray enough. So, um, and thank you for your support, your encouragement. Um, we we are doing, we are seeking the Lord in this and trusting that he's got, he's got a plan. Um, if you have any questions or things you want to know, come find one of us, come find any member of the team afterwards or at any time. We can do that. That's, that's our update. All right. Thank you, Michonne Gregg. Let me go ahead and have David come on up now to share more about where we're heading as we look at this fall and, and ministry opportunities that we have going on with village groups and a number of other things. There's a lot to, um, I think, be excited about, but also one to, yeah, to seek the Lord for how we can be a part of it in sustainable ways. Thank you, Clint. So I want to go back to kind of uh, the, Clint said, the vision of our church. You know, we want to be so compelled by the love of Christ so that we embody that love to our neighborhood. So I kind of want to take that first, uh, that first part there. Why, why are we here? What are we doing here? You know, we're gathered here because we believe that Christ loves us and he loves this community. And so we are called to be compelled. We, we gather together to be compelled by that love. And so what we've done here, the primary thing that we, you can be a part of our church is by participating in our worship service. That's one of the things that we, we gather around the Word and the sacrament so that we can be compelled by that love as, as a, a church uh, who are called uh, by God. I want to encourage you around that, other, how we can be compelled. There's two things I want to encourage you this fall to um, the ways in which we can be compelled by the love of Christ. And that involves our congregational gatherings, that we have, and also our, so these are our large group gatherings, if you want to think about it like that, and also our small group gatherings. So let me start with, actually, Wes, will you put up um, our large group gatherings to start there? So this is like times that we can gather together as a church body, as a whole community. Um, looking ahead here, just, um, we've already been advertising some of this. This is just kind of, you're going to be hearing more about some of these things, but this is a time for us to fellowship, just to be in relationship together. 
as a community. Um, we're going to have an evening of prayer Sunday, August 28th uh, at 5 p.m. And Clint was kind of alluding to this earlier. This is going to be an opportunity for us. We're actually going to go on a prayer walk out into the neighborhood. Uh, we're going to kind of have uh, uh, places for you to kind of go and prompts for you to pray uh, for our church and for the neighborhood. So that will be an opportunity for us uh, that will be in two Sundays to gather together and not just to gather together, but to actually go out and walk and pray. So um, that will be Sunday, August 28th. The next one will be we're going to have a church picnic on Sunday, September the 11th. We try to have uh, those on a regular basis. So that will be right after the service. Raise your hand if you've been to one of our church picnics before. Yep. Mm -hmm. Brownwood Park. So bring your own lunch. Bring your own drink. We'll gather. Uh, uh, hopefully the weather will be um, cooling down a little bit by then. And then uh, more information to come on this. How many of you guys have ever been to the East Atlanta Strut? Um, so we, we want to put that on the calendar. This is September 24th. This is a really a great time for us to to really just be in our community while there's a uh, there's event a major event happening. And so um, that'll be the strut is organized from 12 uh, to 6 p.m. Um, and more information will be coming about that. And then also to save the date, the Fortsons are graciously volunteered to host a fall cookout on October the 22nd. That's a Saturday. And that'll be at 5 p.m. Again, this is, these are opportunities for us to gather together uh, as, a, as a body, as a church-wide community, uh, just to fellowship and to be together and to get to know one another. And so that's, again, we believe that those, the reason we do that is that we believe that that's one way we are compelled by the love of Christ, by being together as his body, as a large group, but also together as a small group. So um, I want to give you, there's, uh, as Clint mentioned, but there's five opportunities um, the way to think about this is um, the first three, so you've, if, for those of you who've been around, you'll remember a couple years ago we organized our church into three neighborhood parishes. And during the pandemic, you know, that, that's kind of ebbed and flowed a little bit in how we've uh, run that, that ministry. One of, the, one of the positives of having uh, our church organized into neighborhood parishes is it actually absorbs a lot of the transiency that we've experienced. So, for example... Michelle Napton was leading our East Atlanta Village group. She has a lot on her plate right now. And so we were able to kind of keep that group going. And now uh, uh, participants in the group, new members, well, you're not new anymore. Come on, you're not new. Uh, Alex and Mary are going to be hosting and leading that group. Um, and so these are, uh, so we're still going to have groups that are hosted by our neighborhood parishes. Uh, the same is true of, of my parish, East Lake uh, Decatur Parish. We're going to have Stephen and Bethany Eicholtz be leading that, and uh, that will be hosted by uh, the Stancils and the Whitakers. Uh, um, and then also we will have a group uh, hosted by the Cooks, the, the, the uh, Grant Park, Ormwood Park. And so you can see the times there. These will be meeting twice a month, okay? And these are hosted by our neighborhood parishes. And so, for example, you want to note uh, when those begins. So we have two of those groups beginning this week. So the Cooks group in Grant Park, Ormwood Park, that will begin this Tuesday. And they'll be meeting on a, um, is it bi, -mo bi monthly or bi weekly? What, twice a month. I looked, I literally looked up the definition this week. It's really annoying. <laughs> semi monthly? That's what you say? That has no, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> every two, so twice a month, every two weeks, however you want to think about it. Right. So these are, uh, these are the groups. My group will begin, uh, the group that I'm a part of, will begin next Sunday. That will be meeting on Sundays at 4 o'clock. Again, um, the iCultures will lead that. And then the other group, uh, is Mary and Alex, will be hosting on Wednesdays. You texted me. that she... Okay, fine. You start the 24th. Whenever you want to start. Is... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Okay. Okay, thank you. So you started the I'm so sorry. I'm, yeah, <laughs> exactly. There you go. Okay. There you go. Boom. August the 24th. And for the real MVP, Wes McRae. Um, so again, these are, think about them, hosted by our neighborhood parishes. They're out in the neighborhoods. We also have two groups that are going to be hosted here at Village Church on a weekly basis. And those groups will be uh, Bill Warden, uh, or I think you've got, you've got the record for the, the um, longest running village group right now. Um, so 
That will start September the 11th uh, at 1230. Um, and again, that will be led by Bill and hosted at Village Church. And then we have, as uh, Clint announced today, uh, we have our parenting group. Uh, more information coming about that. Was, that, what, that will begin in September on September 14th. But you also have an informational meeting. I think that was August. I forget the day that uh, that, that was going to, uh, the informational meeting that's coming up. Wednesday, August 24th. Okay. Um, all right. So those are some opportunities for you to uh, gather together. As This is the primary way that you can be involved in our church outside of participating in worship. Again, why? Why do we do this? Because we want to be compelled by the love of Christ. We gather around a fellowship in our large group gatherings. We gather in, in our small group gatherings to experience Christ through his word and through prayer. And so this is why we do it, because we want to be compelled by the love of Christ so that we can go embody that love to our to our neighbors. So a couple other things coming soon. We will have uh, men's and women's events that are going to be organized by Clint and Leanne. Um, so more information coming about that. Also, uh, please note, we will have a Saturday upcoming in, within the next uh, few weeks we'll, on a Saturday. Uh, we'll, where's Peter? There you are. We're going to be over at um, um, Brandon Towers. Thank you. Uh, on a Saturday morning for coffee and donuts. And so Peter will have more information about that coming up. So that's one way uh, you can be involved in the life of our neighborhood and serving. So um, any questions? Okay. So I want to invite you, just the main thing is just really, the if you don't hear it, like participating in the life of the church, number one, by coming to worship, and number two, by being involved in a group, um, being involved in the, in the life of our church by being involved in large group and small group. So that's all I got. All right. Yep, we'll do. Let's pray and let's close this meeting. Father, thank you for, once again, uh, for your faithfulness. Thank you for who you are. Uh, we gather together because of you. There is no other reason to be here other than because you love us. And that love is so great that you desire for us to not only receive it, but to go out and proclaim it in our lives and in our, through our actions and through our words so that we might embody that love. So we, I pray that we would be a community that lives our, is able to live out our vision. Would you, Spirit, empower us? All the things that we're talking about, all the plans that we've made, we submit before you. Uh, we uh, ask that you would bring about, even in our church, a spirit of unity, uh, that we would be in step together as we work towards living out our vision and our mission. Uh, Father, we, I pray that you would um, direct our steps even uh, now. I, I pray your blessing upon our large group gatherings. I pray your blessing upon our small group gatherings, that, uh, that you would speak through your word and that you would encourage um, us to, to, to know your love even more. Lord, we pray for our finances. We thank you for the ways you've provided. We ask that you continue to provide um, so that we can celebrate uh, at the end of the year your goodness. Uh, we continue to pray for just uh, our future, our next chapter. Uh, I pray your blessing upon the hiring committee and their work. Thank you for the work that they are doing. And uh, we ask that you be with us and guide and lead us uh, as your body. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. That's it, folks.